Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Balfour, and thank you for joining us for the latest Strawby's Planar. So this is a, an interactive workshop where we are going to be focusing on endless fun and beautiful music. And with me here is Christopher Hogbart. He's a beloved member of the Strawby's team, but also a very passionate, you know, experimental music maker, maker and also artist on top of his normal work duties. So he's gonna be demonstrating very hands-on throughout this entire planar session with the sampling of various hardware and programming tools, which he was just showing up. Christopher, can you show us uh, some of the tools that you're gonna be using the two boards that you showed up earlier? Yeah, we're gonna be using this QuirkBot board uh, that is produced by us. And then we're gonna uh, show how to use the, the micro bit together with the robotics board uh, to, to make some other stuff. <laughs> Yes. And this planar is also in support of the Global Music Challenge. So I want to just, you know, briefly touch upon what is the, the, global, the global Music Challenge by Strawbies. So if you go to strawbies.com slash global dash challenge, you will also find a, a, a ongoing competition where you can participate through your students' projects and submit with the potential of winning major prizes through Strawbies. So up to a value of 13,000 uh, 13, US dollars worth of prizes with, uh, with a few global partners like Musilla and also uh, Sound, 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 SoundCloud. So, you know, the, the competition is running until August 14th, 2021. So you still have time to participate. So if you have a summer camp or some ongoing workshops, or even if you are, you know, with your children at home, you can uh, sign up and you can, uh, submit your projects based off your group. So groups for different age ranges, six to eight years old, nine to 14, or um, in the parents and home learners section, uh, four, six to 14 years old. So go ahead and check us out at strawbiescom slash global dash challenge for more information on how to compete. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Christopher to take you through the wonderful world of music making. Uh, how do I share my screen here? You just kind of disappeared now, right? Uh, there we go. Share screen. One, two, three, share. Can you see my screen now? You can, I hope. Yes. Great. I'm going to do presentation thing then. Uh, right. Uh, Yes, as, as Lindsay mentioned, I think this, this global, um, global challenge um, is going to, I, I think that if you want to be part of this global challenge, I just want to add that uh, some of the projects that I'm going to do today, uh, they are almost like skeleton projects that you can continue to build on for this global challenge and just use as sort of a, a base for them and then get really creative around it. So. Uh, you can think of, of this presentation a little bit like this as well. Uh, maybe short about me, i am uh, been part of the Strobis team like from the start pretty much. Uh, and I'm, I'm working, <clears throat> I've been working with hardware and production and, and been doing a lot of stuff inside of sort of the, the Strobis, the Strobis uh, <laughs> sphere. <laughs> And one of the th one of the things that I did, I, I actually designed uh, this guy, the QuirkBot, uh, and also the robotics board. So I'm the sort of the hardware designer behind it. But uh, before uh, I started working with QuirkBot, which was the first first thing I did together with Strobis, um, I was actually making musical instruments. So that was sort of my my main uh, main call in life. <laughs> so I, I've been I've been building musical instruments from almost anything. Uh, I've been uh, making musical instruments from radioactive sources, from swings, like uh, I've been making musical instruments from my bed. Uh, so I was actually um, doing a master of fine arts and my main art, put, uh, art output or my main, my main artist thing was to make different weird and wonderful musical instruments. Um, so I have I have a very big passion for uh, the field of musical instruments, and I I, th I think that uh, there is a lot there to explore, uh, also in a learning context. 
So yeah, maybe I should go on to today's schedule. I want to make just like to get you on the uh, start a little bit of the thought process. What what instruments and especially electronic musical instruments is about. I'm just going to talk very briefly about some some overview, like what 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 is an electronic musical instrument and what makes it special. Uh, and then I'm going to do a bunch of demos. I'm going to do four demos with the Quirkbot and Microbits, some a bit shorter and some a bit longer. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some resources for sound on the web. Uh, it's going to be more clear what, what that is later. It's a short thing. And then if we have time, uh, Lindsay will have to decide <laughs> if we have time, I might show some what we call like high ceiling projects, meaning uh, after you have done the stuff that we, we do in the demos, like where can you go if you want to explore more? Or if you have a student that is like very, very interested in it, uh, what, where can you point them? Like what is sort of the next step? Because there is of course always a next step to explore when it comes to making musical instruments or making music uh, in general. Uh, and if you have questions, write them, write them to, to, uh, in the chat and, and uh, Lindsay will uh, send them on to me. <laughs> right. Uh, so musical instruments, uh, why, why should you care about musical instruments at all? Isn't that like a really weird thing? Uh, I, I think we should care about musical instruments and I think that we should engage with making musical instruments because this is something that we have uh, been doing as a species for a very very long time uh, the flute on the right here uh, is actually uh, a bone flute uh, that's sixty thousand years old uh, it was made by neanderthals and i mean it's twenty thousand years older than the oldest sort of venus statue if you think about like old old artifacts that we can find. Uh, so musical instruments and making musical instruments has really been with us from the start. And uh, here, here in the middle, we have, a, we have an English organ from the, from, that was constructed between 1605 to, to 1688. So this sort of, I wanna represent this, this I wanna represent like that one of the things that musical instruments is doing, like we have, always been using like our latest technology and, and our, we have been putting a lot, a lot of effort into, uh, into making musical instruments in general. Uh, and I think that like this, this sort of line here shows this, this, these three mu musical instruments here, the, the Ak Akai um, wind controller, uh, all of them are about making music from like blowing air into a pipe. And this is just like three ways of blowing air into a pipe to, to make music. Um, and the one on the right is of course, like both a sophisticated computer inside and it's, it's uh, a lot of like sensors and, and high tech and wireless and, and all the stuff, but you can, there is clearly lot, sort of a lineage here. Um, and I think that Musical instruments have always been a way to use technology for self-expression in a way. So I think that in in a, in a context of learning, uh, if you can do something that is important to you or that makes you express yourself, I think that you will connect much more and you will care more about the technology. So I think that using musical instruments, not only is it like fun, but it's also uh, it can be a bit more, it, it can be a meaningful and, and a useful way to, to actually learn about technology because there is so many ways you can use technology to, to create music and there is um, so much creativity and, and so much freedom you have there. Uh, and you're not making something that is useful in the traditional sense. Uh, I mean, depending on how you define useful but it's it, you're making you're making something for fun but you can you can really you can really engage with it and, and the more the more you engage with the technology and the more you learn about it the 
the more you can uh, the more reward you get it's like it's it's a very rewarding process and, and we can it can be rewarding already from the start um so electronic musical instruments this is what we're going to do today right uh one of the big differences between the electronic music like an electronic musical instrument and and say an acoustic musical instruments is that uh the way you interact with an acoust acoustic musical instrument is usually determined by the way that it makes sound like a drum makes sounds from a membrane and you're banging on that membrane it's like the physicality of the object and the way you interact with it is very closely connected uh, this gets a little bit less connected let's say in the organ on the other picture then you're sort of starting to move away from that but it's still like a very mechanical physical connection between the things that makes the sound and the things that you touch let's say the the, the physical thing uh, this is not true for electronic instruments. Uh, in the electronics instruments, you have a part that generates the sound. Uh, usually it can be software, but it can also be like just discrete electronics. Uh, and then you will have to decide how you control this, right? So you have to make the, the physical thing is not there from the beginning. The physical thing is something you have to make to create the instrument. And then between them, there is like a control signal. You have to send a signal from the thing that you build so that you can play it uh, and the thing that is actually sort of generating the sound. This is very, very simplified. And, you know, if, if there are any music instrument nerd out there uh, talking about electroacoustical instruments and there is like, la, la, la. but this, this uh, sort of observation that the, the actual physicality of, of the instrument and the, uh, the thing that is generating the sound um, if we look at it like this, it sort of actually opens up a lot of ways for us to be creative because we can combine any sort of sound with any type of interaction and the interaction, the sound plays together uh, with to create the instrument and um, in our case here, um, where we are going to spend the most time is actually on the physical controller because the physical controller is the thing that is a bit easier to do. <laughs> we have there is already a lot of sound generation stuff out there, stuff that makes sound electronically, and finding ways to control those sounds in different ways uh, is sort of like that's the that's the fast way to start creating musical instruments. And the stuff that we will use is like the microbit. Uh, this guy, uh, we're gonna use the quirk bot. We're gonna use some sensors, some light sensors and some touch sensors. Um, we're going to use strawbies for building structures, some craft materials, and uh, the classic, oops, the classic thing, <laughs> fruit. Um, so I think like, let's get started with today's demos. I think I've been talking enough about musical instruments. And if, if you want to discuss this later, just uh, call me up. <laughs> I'll talk forever. Uh, right, so the things that we're going to do today, we're going to start by spending a little bit of time to show how to make <clears throat> sort of a general touch interface with the Strobis or with Quirkbot. Uh, whoops, this, this one here. Uh, and together with Strobis Music as a sound source. So this is going to be the controller. And uh, we're going to use the sound source. Um, it's an online thing. Uh, then we're also going to do uh, a light control thing uh, with also with Quirkbot. Uh, then we're going to go move over to making two things with the microbit. Uh, we're going to make one that is using the accelerometer in the microbit, like that can sense the movement of it. And then the sound is going to come out of Scratch, which you might be familiar. It's not, if not, uh, you're going to see it in a second. Uh, and the last one, we're actually going to sort of turn the tables and throw out everything that I said before about the controller and the sound making thing. And we're going to go in, in reverse and actually make uh, a little drummer that is physically drumming on things. Just so that we are not following the rules too strictly here. Uh, right. Uh, I think that's a good thing for me to do now is to start by showing you how to what we're gonna do? Yes, yeah, let's let's just first uh, explain what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do a touch interface, 
and then we're going to have a control signal sending over to a sound generation thing right uh, the sound generation thing we can actually we can actually look at that directly uh, is this thing here it's it's a website music.strobis.com and uh, this one you can play by actually touching the keys on your keyboard and we are going to make this one send out keys so that we can play this one. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is that we're going to program this one to send out, uh, to use the touch controllers that are uh, inside of this. Each of the arms and legs, they can work as touch controllers. So we're going to make them uh, touch sensitive. And then we're going to make a program that say, if I touch this one, uh, then I'm going to send out a key. And then this thing is going to play. So let's start by, let's start by doing that little program first. Right. Uh, so here we are in Strobis code. Uh, I'm going to just jump into the deep end and not explain too much what I'm, I mean, I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing, but uh, this is basically our web interface for programming uh, the QuirkBot. And uh, the way you program here is that you, you drag things in from the side here. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to make the touch thing is touch, touch, touchy thing for the, for the QuirkBot. And then I need one of these uh, things called circuit touch. Uh, and then I also actually want to go to the advanced mode because I, I need another, another part here is to actually send the key press and it's under output here. Um, and this works, the, there are three colors here. You have the input, you have the brains and you have the output. And the input is stuff that goes in like that it can sense and brains is stuff that it can do sort of internally like math and logic and stuff like that. And output is stuff that it can send out to the outer world. And that could be like a motor, or it can also be like a key press to the computer. And because this is connected with a USB to the computer, it can send the key press out over USB. So let's start by making the, the touch thing work here. The first thing you have to say is like, where uh, do we want the touch interface to work? And we can start by putting it on the horn, which is this one. Uh, I think you can see here that there is a representation of, of the quirk bot here. So you can see what the horn on the left arm and the right arm are and, and so on. It can be a little bit confusing because the left arm is, you see here it's on the right because we are uh, making uh, the names of the arms from the perspective of the quirk bot. We are sort of trying to make this an anthropomorphic thing. So you have to look at this as a face with eyes and, and arms and legs. And this is its right arm, just so to uh, take away that confusion. Um, so we have the place, and then we have some other things to go out here. Min and max, we don't have to touch right now. Uh, zero and one is completely fine. Uh, but this one here, the sensitivities, this one is quite useful to play with. Uh, the touch sensitivity, uh, this is setting the touch sensitivity. <laughs> this is what it's doing. Like zero is then is not very sensitive, and one is very very sensitive. So I'm gonna put it somewhere in the middle. Like five is usually or zero point five is usually quite good. Uh, yep. And then uh, I'm going to connect these two here. Uh, so when I'm touching this one, uh, I want it to send uh, this touch thing to the trigger. Uh, and when it's not triggering, it's sending out a zero. And when it's triggering, it's sending out a one. And uh, most of the nodes, as we call these things here, they sort of react to zero and one and anything in between zero and one. Uh, now there's just one more thing that we need to do here is we have to determine what key do we want to send out. And uh, here we can just choose which key we want to send out. Let's just go with key A here. And now our program is actually done. Uh, so we can upload it to the QuirkBot. 
And now this happens, not detected. Why is that? This is because I did not switch it on. So I have to actually switch it on. And now it detects it. You can see down here that it's ready and I can actually start the upload. Right, so now we should test it somehow. Let's, let's go to this side here because I actually have a little text window open here so we can see what we are typing in. So uh, maybe I should do it under the here, yeah. So the way that the touch interface on the QuirkBot works is that it's actually uh, these front pads here and the inner holes, they are the, the touch sensors. And they get activated when they get connected to ground. Uh, think of ground uh, as sort of the negative pole on a battery or um, sort of the, yeah. <laughs> If you if you know anything about electricity, the third thing you learn about is like you have the positive and the negative, and the, the ground is the same as the negative. So the ground uh, is actually on the back side of, of, of this one, and uh, the trigger is on the front side, and it's actually very sensitive. So if you if you touch it like this, you will close them. You will close the loop between the front and the back, and it's actually closing the loop through your hand. So when you're touching like this, you can see that we are writing the letter A over and over again. Uh, and now there is, of course, many ways to, to activate this touch thing. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways that we can do it is that we can connect uh, this little alligator clip. So let's say we want to activate this one. We connect an alligator clip here to the inner hole. And then we can touch the ground here again, A, 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 A. Uh, there is also another point on the QuirkBot where ground exists, and it's on this eye. So we can touch the eye as well. And this is also very useful because then we can put another alligator clip here. And then we can have the alligator clips touch each other. Or as I showed you before, they're actually so sensitive. So I, if I hold one alligator clip and then touch the other alligator clip, it actually goes through my, my body. So this means that we can, if we hold, if we hold the ground, the, the one that I put to the eye, the black cable, uh, then if we hold that one or somehow connect it to us, maybe if we have a bracelet or if we have a ring or something, we hold that one, then anything that is connected to, to this part here can uh, work as a touch sensor. This is why we call it circuit touch, by the way, because you are closing a circuit, you're closing a loop. Uh, and then if we want to make this sound, we just go to a place that takes key input and uh, make that into uh, sounds. So let's actually drag this one out so we can get a little bit better understanding of it. So if we drag this to the thing, here we have the keys. So if I'm touching this one, bam, 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 I can trigger the key. Uh, so now we have sort of the, the base of, of, now we know everything about the technology of this instrument, uh, pretty much uh, the base of the technology of this instrument. Uh, we know how the code works uh, and we know how the, how the touch function works. So the next step is to actually design what the, what the interface would look like. And this is where, the creative part comes in. Um, maybe I should also mention here in the code that now we are triggering one uh, on the horn, but we can of course just make more of these. We can make up till five of these. Uh, just do the left arm, 0 0.5, take another key, for instance, S, why not? and then connect it. 
So now we have made made a second one that is a, se a second trigger. So uh, if we if we upload this one. Now I actually connected connected some more cables here. I have a lot of cables in my hand now. So I'm holding one and then I can. So, I mean, as you know, this, this cables, like holding the cables and stuff like that, it's not a very good interface. We want to, we want to do something else. Um, and one thing that I, that you can do, because you can use anything that is in any way conductive. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot conductive. It just shouldn't be an insulator. <laughs> uh, like your body is conductive and metal things is conductive. So things that contain some water, they are conductive as well. And as long as you can somehow create a loop between ground and your trigger point, you can you can make uh, you can make something play. So uh, here I have this is one this is one technique to sort of build interfaces from really cheap and nice material. And it's just I I love this because you can you can cut out cardboard in any shape you want. I purposefully made like a really boring here so that you shouldn't copy this. You should make something that is much more imaginative and much more colorful and fun. Uh, and you can just, but you can just wrap these things and then just take some painter's tape on the back, slap it on, bam. And then you have a piece of something that you can interact with if you just connect it to an alligator clip that I might not be able to do because I'm a bit fumbly. So connecting to the alligator clip, holding this one. Whoops, let's go back to this. So that's that's pretty much it. This is this is how the whole thing works. Um yeah, maybe I should just uh, for the sake of completeness, <laughs> let's remove this one. I should maybe just uh, build this thing here. I don't know if that is time well spent, but I think it's nice to have a complete little project. That. And then we can use we can use this pad as the ground pad. So if I'm just somehow holding this one, then I can play the others. Let's connect all five of them. Uh, yeah. So I mean. This is a very quick, quick way of, of building an instrument. Let's me also code the rest of the, of the keys here. Uh, so we need five more touch things. Three, four, three more. So let's make them on in a row. And I want them to be maybe F leg. Right leg, right arm, let's do the same sensitivity, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 5. And then we want some more key presses, three more key presses, bam, bam. And here we go for E. F E and we'll connect everything up. So now I think I have everything. Let's 
build this one. Right, and now I guess we should be able to play this one. Now you can see that I completely put them in a different order here. But I guess that's fine. You don't have to be so. So hard on yourself if you make these type of mistakes. Um, Lindsay, do you have any questions from the audience on this one? I, I feel that I have been very. Yeah. I'm gonna just. Do you have questions from the audience? So what? What is a question? Is what happens if you touch two arms at the same time? Does it play oh, this the note, or does it just prioritize the one that's just a second? Second faster. No, it actually it actually detects them at the same time. You can play all of them. It's multi. <laughs> ah, okay. Multi. So, and it's also I'm, now I'm also I'm switching out these these metal things to to some other things here, like I don't know, glass of water. Why not? My water. So now I, I'm I'm still holding the the thing, and then I can. Just see here. Yeah. So. Uh, it's pretty stable. It works. It works pretty well, and there are a lot of of different sound sources now we are using our own because it's like very it's easy to see what is happening and we can like uh, change sounds here and um but there are there are a lot of other sound sources i'm going to show i'm going to show you some of them later um Let's see, how are we on time? Um, maybe I should speed up a little bit, but I was anyway planning on spending the most time on this one because this is, as you can see, it's like a very open-ended thing. Like you can, you can make this part look almost any way you want. Uh, you can use the, we have had workshops where we are not like using this, but people are, we're using five humans and one other human is playing the other humans. Uh, you can make like, um, yeah, uh, because the way, the way you can touch it, because now I'm like very, it's very mechanical and very simple. I can touch it just like a piano or a touch thing, uh, but it's easier to film than to, to film something uh, big and weird, but uh, this is sort of where you come in. Uh, this is this is where the challenge are uh, to to create to create this, uh, or actually where where the learning is as well, and uh, where you can also reflect on why uh, you designed something in a certain way or another way. Um, I mean, you can imitate other instruments. You can imitate the guitar. You can you can imitate like. Um, I don't know, flute maybe. <laughs> How would you do that? Um, I have a question, Christopher. Yeah. Uh, we're we're being asked about uh, can you connect more than one core bot to another to extend the five arms? Yes, that's absolutely possible. You can you can have if you have another if you have another core bot, uh, and you make and you make a second program um, here, and you put. I mean, I would I would probably put other keys so that you get you get different uh, key presses. Uh, then you can then you can connect as many as you like, <laughs> as many as you have USB ports, or you can have an USB extension. So this is this is uh, this is expandable. It's it it works when you are putting this here. When you are putting as soon as you're putting this key press here, uh, then this will act just like uh, regular USB keyboard that you can connect to any computer. This is also why I showed here, like in, in the, just a regular typing program, 
if you're oops, if you're in that one, you can just you're just typing the letters. That's what you're doing here. Um, All right. Well, um, Christopher, maybe we can move on to the next. Yeah, let's let's move on. Let's. We're let's running uh, low I'm going to show. Time. Yeah, I'm I'm a bit uh, slow as uh, predictable. Uh, let's do Perhaps a very can... let's do a very let's do a very simple and quick one instead. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's pretty simple. Let's make a light instrument. Uh, here is a piece of code that is actually using the light sensor uh, as an input. It says a squeeze sensor here, but the squeeze sensor is actually the same as the light sensor input uh, with the only difference that the squeeze sensor is auto calibrating. So what that means is that it's continuously just checking what is the most light that I have seen uh, and what is the least light that I have seen. And then it says the, the least to, to zero and the most to one. And if it sees more light and it sort of expands uh, and uh, if you restart it, it, it resets again. So this is, this is very useful for our purposes right now. Um, so this one is, is sending out sort of an analog value between zero and one. So it sort of goes between zero and one, depending on how much lights, light it sees. And it's connected to the horn. So the, I'm just gonna show you the light sensor here. It's like a, a little thing like that. And you can connect it to the cork, but uh, like that. Oops, it's hard to show, there we go. So it's a little, little thing that just senses the light. Um, and then our other part here is the brains, uh, which is pretty much just looking at this signal from that goes from zero to one. And if it's zero, it sends out an A. And if it's a one, it sends out a G. And if it's somewhere in between, it sends out these other, uh, these other letters. And then we go into this output, which is almost like the one we were using before, which was the key press, but here's a key sequence. So the key press, the difference here is that here you set the key. So it only has one key, right? And then you trigger this key. So it's an N and then you trigger N, 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 N. This one, it takes a key input. So if you send it an A, it sends out an A. If you send it an S, it sends out an S. Um, and let's upload this code to our little quirk bot and see what it does. Here we go. So let's see. Here we have the cork button. We can type by actually just putting it in the shade and putting it out in the light again. So as long as it's changing, when nothing is happening, it's not typing. It's only when it's the light conditions change. So and if we plug this into the, the thing that makes sound when it gets keys, Let's take another one. Oops. Let's go with three minute guitar. So now the only thing I have here is like a light sensor. And the challenge here, of course, is to create an to build the things around here that stop, stops the light and lets the light through again. And that you can do in a million ways. You can use reflections, you can uh, actually send, you can use actual light sources. Uh, you can do like what I'm doing, something that is shading it. Um, there is a million ways to do it and there is a million ways to interact with those sort of mechanical contraptions that you can build to to control how much light this gets. Um, so this is this is a very fun and useful uh, way of doing stuff. 
Right. Uh, I think that we are going to move on to the micro bit. Um, right. Uh, proceed here. Uh, let's go with a double base. Uh, so uh, the micro bit, uh, it's not able to actually function uh, as a keyboard like the corkbot can do. But it has some other very, very cool tricks up its sleeves. And uh, that is that it has, uh, uh, it can send out stuff over uh, Bluetooth. Uh, so it can talk Bluetooth uh, with your computer. And there is also this thing called Scratch Link that makes it possible for uh, the micro bit to talk to Scratch. Uh, that's a little thing that you install on the micro bit and the little thing that you install in your computer. So it's not like super seamless. It's not just going to a website. Uh, it takes like five, 10 minutes to set up. Uh, but once you have that set up, uh, you have sort of all the powers of the micro bit uh, input and sensors. Uh, and you can, you can use that to interact with things inside of your uh, scratch. Uh, inside of your Scratch programs. Uh, and if you haven't used Scratch before, I super highly recommend it. There is a lot of tutorials and there are a lot of really fun things to do. Uh, it's free, it's from, uh, from MIT. Uh, it's, uh, they are pioneers in, I, I, I'm guessing a lot of you guys uh, probably have seen it, but if, uh, if you haven't, I, I highly recommend you checking it out. Um, so this scratch link is activated. Uh, I have the micro bit that I have prepared before, and I have put it actually in the uh, in the robotics board so that it has uh, its external battery. And now it's it's giving me a little thing here that's like from the. Uh, I think Lindsay will post uh, a link uh, on how to how to prepare this. Uh, so now let's reconnect to that. It's looking for devices and we can connect. So go to editor. So what have I been programming here? So this is a little program that takes the, uh, when the A button is pressed and when the B button is pressed is doing something. And the thing is doing is that it's setting a pitch and then it's playing a sound, it's setting a pitch and it the, based on the tilt, like the angle of the, of the device and then it's playing a sound. Uh, these blocks in, in, in Scratch that place sounds, they are actually pretty, pretty cool and pretty powerful because if you go to that tab here uh, for sounds, there is a bunch of sounds that you can choose from, uh, but you can also record your own sounds, which is really, really fun. It means that uh, this board can trigger any sound that you can actually record on the fly. Uh, so I'm just going to demo this one by pressing the, so now it's like playing a bass sound on this one and on the other one it's playing a bass sound. And then when I, so it's, and then, of course, like you can do whatever. I recorded a little bit of my own sounds here. So recording one here, let's see what that is. Very, very fun. And recording a sound is as easy as just uh, pressing record here and then allow and then say, woohoo. And then you have a sound that you can use oops, in your code. Christopher, can you zoom into the code just a little bit more? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Oh, yeah, yeah. Did I zoom into the code? Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah, perfect. Oh, okay, sorry. Thank you. So, so and 
So this is just one example of how to use the, the inputs from from the the microbit uh, to here. Um, the way that I showed you how to actually use inputs from uh, from the QuirkBot, where you have something connecting to uh, to ground uh, when you connect like uh, one for, like you have like from zero to, zero to one here and then you have a ground uh, you can do that as well uh, to trigger things um, and if you go down here to the to the microbit thing uh, to the microbit blocks uh, you can always experiment with with these blocks so like for instance when moved or when shaken, let's say, uh, then we can say that we want to play a sound when it's shaken. Uh, so let's play a sound uh, two here, for instance. Uh, boing, boing. So now when we're boing. shaking it, we're playing a sound. So this also opens up for a lot of different uh, fun and weird things to, to play with. Uh, Boing. OK. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to the last demo, because uh, I'm uh, we are sort of running out of time. And the last demo is here. <laughs> this monstrosity. What is happening here? Now we are quickly moving over to uh, microbit uh, and make code and microbits uh, is also if you're not familiar it's kind of a very similar thing to the the quirkbot you can program it online and you can do a lot of uh, fun things with it um, and here is like before we were using the microbit just with kind of a, a default program that we uploaded and here we are actually creating our own program um, this program, I have two loops that is pretty much just doing some stuff over and over again. It's moving a servo to a position, and then it's waiting, and then it's moving a servo again, and then it's waiting, and then it's moving a servo again, and then it's waiting. Um, and it's doing that for server A and server B. Uh, and what this results is, the results in is actually two servos that do this thing. Uh, and if you build something like this, uh, let's see, here we go. Can you see what we're building? Yeah. Here, and upload code, then we will have, we build a little bit of a, Physical drum machine. Well, that is coming through. Uh, we had some problem with actually the recorded sound here, so you can't hear it so well. But you can use pretty much whatever uh, and yeah, that is a drummer. This, of course, you can also you can also program this uh, with the quirk bot if you want to. Uh, so uh, all the moving two motors back and forth in the quirk bot, it's also quite easy to figure out. I actually don't have a, an example of that here now. I don't think I have time to show it anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, this thing here is something you can do. <laughs> And the actual changing of the rhythm here um, is pretty much going to be trial and error. Uh, I just did something that I thought would be good. Um, yeah, this, this is a lot of experimentation. Uh, maybe I should just turn it off so you can hear Great. me better. Yeah, I, I have one more thing that I wanted to show. Uh, and I think it's a very quick one. Uh, yeah, and you have it's about like one, two minutes to show. One, two minutes to show. All right. Uh, and that is that is related to 
this part here, the sound generation, because now I've been showing some physical controllers and stuff, and I want to show some more sound generation. And especially if you're going to use the Quirk bot for something, you might not always want to use our amazing Strobis music thing that when you're pressing the keys, they are making sounds. Yes, but there are a lot of other things on the internet that when you press the keys, uh, it can make some sounds. Uh, so I have actually a list here from uh, a nice company called Playtronica. Uh, they are old friends. I hope they don't mind us using this as a resource. And uh, if you scroll down a little bit here, you will have since to play with your keyboard and mouse. So um, here is one, Uno, Uno 106 is, is a very, it's like a super classic synth. Uh, did I take it up? Yeah, let's, let's go to that one. And here you can see that it's also very easy. You can, and here is an amazing way to, you can get into sound synthesis. And then you can, of course, program the QuirkBot to play which notes you want. And you can program your own sounds. And everything's going to be just wonderful. Um, and play with the other scenes as well. So yeah, I think that was the basic presentations. I have more cool stuff to show you, but I'm guessing that Lindsay will say that we don't have time for it. <laughs> Well, just rest assured that anything that we uh, don't have time to present, we'll also send, you know, as a follow up to this planar. So, uh, you know, things that we didn't cover, which is a very rich, you know, wealth of resources, we'll send out right after this planar. But yes, you have a sneak peek into the the high ceiling approach with the core. Yeah, box. I will show you how to. We have the we have the plans for the people who are or the anyone who really likes to solder and stuff like that, you can actually build one of these and control your, all your music making machines with. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I think we're going to close our session down. But thanks again for joining. Again, we will share this recording, publish it on Strawby's Learning and our webinar site, as well as professional learning site. Thank you and have a good night, everyone.